On June 11th, the section of Interstate 95 collapsed in Philadelphia. Now, less than two weeks later, traffic is about to start flowing again. Joining us right now is Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro. And, Governor, first of all, thank you for being with us today. Second of all, uh, congratulations. Way to under-promise and over-deliver. When this first happened, we thought it was going to be months before the traffic could start picking up on that section of 95 again. What, what happened? Yeah, well, Becky, thanks for having me on. Um, what happened was everybody came together, from our union laborers here in Philadelphia uh, to the White House and President Biden, um, who expressed a willingness to pay for this project, um, to my efforts to cut through the red tape. Everybody was all hands on deck, and we got it done. Um, we were working incredibly hard, literally 24-7. The folks doing this backbreaking work never took a break. And we were able to hit our marks each and every day and make progress. We also um, decided to be innovative and, and not just sort of wait on the traditional, uh, you know, steps that would have taken months and months and months, but instead took innovative approaches to get this road reopened. We know that 160,000 motorists go on 95 every day. We know that as long as it was closed off, it was choking off commerce. It was making it hard for families. It was making it harder for businesses. We had to get it reopened. I think this is an example of what we can do when we come together, when we support organized labor, when we support smart government, when we try and, um, you know, cut through the red tape and just have a focus on getting things done. That's what we did here in Pennsylvania. You got a little help from NASCAR, too, Pocono Speedway, uh, lending some of their yeah. technology to, to help when the weather wasn't cooperating. Well, I'm, I'm glad you raised that. Again, this is part of our innovative approach, right? So we needed about a 12-hour period of dry weather in order to do the final stages of paving and striping. And the weather here has been a little bit unpredictable. It's actually, you know, raining a bit today. And so I'm a NASCAR guy. We reached out to our friends at Pocono Raceway who have this jet dryer that they were willing to bring down to Philadelphia and use to keep the road dry so that the great um, crews at Buckley and Company and others were able to do the striping and the final steps of road work. It's an example of how it's been all hands on deck, everybody willing to do their part, from the local restaurants that were stepping up to feed the workers, to our building trades here in Philadelphia, to our contractors, even to our lawyers, who just like cut through the red tape and got it done, all hands on deck, including an assist from NASCAR. Yeah, it's great to see. I saw you were down at Xfinity Live, I think, getting some wings yourself. Um, Governor, let's talk <laughs> a little bit uh, about, you know, what this means. When will it actually open? This weekend? It's going to open at noon uh, today. As soon okay. as I finish up with you, I'm heading down there. Um, we're we're going to get the road reopened today. Um, six lanes of traffic, three north, three south. So we'll have traffic flowing again uh, in time for today's rush hour and weekend traffic. Uh, and then we're going to immediately begin working on rebuilding a permanent bridge around this. So there'll be no interruption to traffic while we build the permanent structure. That's the innovative approach we took in order to get this open quickly. And by the way, we got it open in 12 days. But in order to get it open quickly, we had to take this innovative approach. Now we'll go about building um, the final permanent structure, and there'll be no interruption to traffic during that process. Governor, you are a new governor, but you're not new to the political scene. You were in Montgomery County for a long time and got involved in lots of things uh, that might be particularly of interest to our audience, too. And I'm talking about Wall Street funds. You made sure that mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the Wall Street funds were kicked out of managing pension money uh, for state and local employees. And you're trying to do the same thing to Pennsylvania writ large. You want to talk a little bit about why you think uh, Wall Street funds should not be in there? Yeah, and, and look, this might not make me particularly popular on your show, but it's what I believe, and that is that, um, you know, all these smart folks wandering around Wall Street, no one's really smarter than the market over the long term. And when you're focused on a pension fund that really needs to be there for generations to come, you want stability, you want uh, growth that's going to be there for our employees in the future. And so I took this approach in Montgomery County, which is one of our large counties in Pennsylvania, to basically divest our pension fund from the active management and go with passive management. In this case, we used Vanguard, but there's a lot of different options out there. And what we found was over the last decade taking that approach, we did far better than the active management of our two major pension funds in Pennsylvania. One's called Peasers, one's called 
SIRS. And so I'm looking to try and do the same thing uh, in this Commonwealth. I, I don't think that we should be wasting uh, millions and millions of dollars on uh, Wall Street money managers when we can be investing in a more passive way and creating greater stability for our retirees here in, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And again, I realize that probably doesn't make me very popular on your show, but it's what I believe and it's what's been proven to work here in the Commonwealth. Yeah, you wouldn't be the only person saying that either. Governor, you got a, a solution to some of the big city problems. Uh, just we got about 30 seconds. Can you fix? We were having a conversation about San Francisco and, and what's happening out the, the tourism industry, the hotel business. My my daughter went to Penn. I, I know about Kensington and, and the open air drug den. I mean, it's it's nightmarish what we're seeing in a lot of our biggest cities. Do you have any idea how to handle this? I do, and I've put forth a number of plans, and I think you've got to focus on this um, in, in a multi-pronged approach. You give me 30 seconds, so I'll be quick. We've got to invest more in law enforcement. I want to hire more police. People have a right to both be safe and feel safe in our community. Safety is at the core of this. Making sure that um, we encourage businesses to reopen and also look to put more residential in our downtown areas. So you've just got more activity in those downtown cores. We've got to make it so businesses aren't priced out of those downtown marketplaces. We've got to make sure that people living in our cities can send their kids to quality schools so that they stay in those areas. So there's a whole host of things that we need to do. There's not one single answer, but we're coming at this in a multidisciplinary way. Public safety, economic development, good quality education for our kids. We can't make those changes overnight, but that's the stuff I'm working on every day as the Commonwealth's governor.